to know your point of view. Hi, everybody. This is Evening Ransom, and you see how light it is. I mean, it's, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, I was up packing, and then I was just, you know, I had you guys on my mind, and I thought, you know, I just want to get up and, and do a quick uh, video before I get on the plane to come home. Um, this time of the year is tricky. It is a tricky one for me. It's my birthday, but also the last time that I saw my son was for my birthday in 2016. And it was also uh, right at that time that I started my channel and, um, and started talking with all of you. And I, uh, I really am, I'm so grateful to you that, that you were, have been there for me and given me this place to come and, and share my experiences and talk about things that I know because it's been a lifesaver for me. It really has been. Yeah, it just has been, it's been a lifesaver for me. I had a near-death experience 15 years before my son died. I had a near-death experience in 2001 when my kids were really small. And, uh, and it was absolutely incredible. Um, it was just, just really an amazing, amazing thing. And what it did is in a way, I think much of the reason that I have been able to handle my son's death the way that I have, and believe me, I'm not perfect. I mean, there's nothing, nothing harder than, than losing a child. That's just absolutely nothing harder than it. Um, and I keep going, and, and also there's nothing harder than losing a child after you've already lost, you know, been, been betrayed by your, you know, your family and friends. So when you basically don't have much of a support network, which I didn't, you know, when my, when my son died, you know, I had been estranged from my family. And so, you know, that was really hard. And, and, I, and that was also, I felt like that had a lot of responsibility for why he was gone, you know, that, that, the, all that conflict and all that chaos and those years of, of that contributed to his death. And that was really, you know, a complicating factor, you know, because he just didn't die in a vacuum. It wasn't like it was some accident out of, you know, out of the blue. You know, he, he didn't commit suicide, but he did, he did die of a drug overdose. You know, he was struggling. He was struggling against a pain that he was trying to escape. Life was, had become unbearable for him. And, and largely, it, it had a lot to do with really this, he was, he was sensitive and wanted to belong and needed peace and love and all of that. And so it was just hard for him growing up in this com, you know, conflict-ridden family. But what I knew from my near-death experience, first of all, I knew that where I was going was this wonderful place. So I knew that. I knew I had a lot of peace about knowing that you know this life, this existence here is just a physical body and that we go on that there's a lot more to it than just this physical body. So that was, that was huge. You know, I had, I had proof of that. You know, it wasn't just a thought or a hope. It was something I really knew, you know, because I had been there and I'd known it. And I also knew I hadn't made a choice 15 years earlier. And, you know, I went back and forth. How could this be? How could I, how could I survive this miracle and then lose my child, you know? But I also had this sense that I, I knew that I had chosen it. I, I knew that I had chosen to go back, um, and you know, I'll, I'll link I'll link here my near death experience stories so that you can you can you know, reference them if you didn't if you haven't already heard them. They've been on my channel since almost the beginning of my channel. You don't have to have a near death experience, and you don't have to lose a child. You don't have to have these things happen to get the lessons that I got. The lessons are really so much about you know being present in the moment, being enjoying this moment, being being ev absolutely present and showing love in everything you do, loving people. And really, it is all about love. That's the whole thing of it. When you die, that's what matters. And you know, I learned something about my son too, which was amazing. At his, at his vigil after he died, you know, I, I, I was thinking of him as, you know, I was always so worried as his mother and I'm thinking of him as, this kid that I just loved more than anything, and I just wanted him to be okay, and I was just so, you know, I, I was so frustrated that he couldn't see how wonderful he was, and how, you know, that why did he have to struggle? Why did he have to have these problems? I just wanted him to get better. And 
But what I, what I saw it, when he, after he died was all these people came up and spoke about him. And they told these amazing stories, the amazing stories of this giving person who was just so present with them, who listened to them, who li looked at them and cared what they thought, cared what they, what they felt, how they, um, you know, played music for that, him and he would listen. He was a musician. He was a wonderful songwriter musician. But how he would let them play for him and how he just would listen to them and ask them all the time, what are you working on? What are you going through? And I remember the first time I played a song for him, the way he would pay attention to me, like, he's really focused when you talk to him and, like, he always wants to know more. And I just remember we're sitting around a campfire and he was fucking wailing. He just, like, inspired me so much. And then to play for him and have him look at me the way he did, it just really meant a lot to me. We sat down to play music and all, he, he, didn't even, he didn't even want to play guitar. He just drummed for me and wanted to hear what I had been writing. And he, he just let me play. You know, you know, it really made me feel when I played with him that that he really cared. And he, he would say things that were so profound to me about our music and what he saw in my ability and what I saw in him, I felt like we, he's just really special to me. He was just all about love. And I thought, you know, if there was anything I wanted to do was to have a child that people would say that about, that had a positive impact on the world. And here he was just 20 years old when he died and he had a really positive impact on the world. It wasn't big, it wasn't, you know, but his immediate world. He had a positive impact on the world, and I looked around at the people that he was related to, you know, his grandparents, and, you know, and they, they couldn't say that, you know? They basically had a, a negative impact on, you know, a lot of people that, you know, you know, at least a few of us that really loved them, and that's what I could see. I couldn't see anyone else that, you know, all the people that kind of felt superior to him, because I was the black sheep in the family, and he had taken over that role. After I'd been estranged from the family, he kind of adopted that role as the black sheep scapegoated one, you know, the one with the family problem, you know. And, uh, and it was interesting to see that he was really so doing, doing so well in so many ways, like so, such a good positive influence on the world. And, um, you know, and he, and he left some beautiful music, and I'm going to do something with all that, and I'm still working on what I'm going to do and how it's going to be, but, um, you know, so, you know, that was the lessons I was learning, and so, what, you know, what could have changed for him, or what would have made it so there'd be no regrets today, would be if he could have forgiven himself for whatever it was that he, you know, he felt so bad about about his addiction and so bad about relapsing so many times and and so bad I mean he just had he had terrible self-esteem problems that came from having an abusive father an abusive family and um but he never blamed anybody else he always blamed himself as kids will you know as kids do and you know if he could have forgiven himself and that's the lesson for that's lesson number one that i got from living and living and dying and then you're dealing with the death of a son is forgiving, 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 forgiving yourself. And for everyone else, I am. What I think you need to you need to be able to say is, you need to will not want to give any more of your future away to your past. You have to have compassion for people because I do believe that everyone does the best that they know how to do. So. If people were narcissistic or hurt you in some way, it's because they were broken. They were absolutely broken and they couldn't, they, they didn't know how to do better. And so you don't have to, I don't necessarily say you have to, if you can't bring yourself to exactly that word of forgiveness, which I think is hard when you, somebody isn't saying they're sorry and they're not or taking ownership for anything they do, I think that can be hard. But if you can have compassion for them, maybe that's exactly the same thing. You know, you just have compassion for, for them as a human being, you have love for them and whatever it is, you know, that they went through. You don't have to be around them anymore. You don't have to let them hurt you anymore. You don't have to do nothing like that. But if you can just sort of let it go, let that past go. And I'm doing it with you. Believe me, I don't have it. I don't have it all figured out either. I'm doing it all the time right along with you because I was pretty well there. But when my son died, it 
reactivated my anger. And, and as I deal with it every day that he's gone, and I know that a lot of it had to do with the fact that he didn't get, that none of the family put his needs first, that's hard. It's really hard. But I understand that they just couldn't. They just couldn't. The same family that wasn't able to take care of me couldn't take care of my kids either. And so they were just really broken. And, and maybe the world doesn't know that. Maybe the world thinks that I'm the broken one. And, and, and the world that knows us, the new us, that is, that's how the story goes. You know, I was the one that kind of left the whole scene and left them there with their story. But that's okay, you know? It's a big world. <laughs> and, you know, I'm a life that was killing me anyway. And that life was literally killing me. Practice gratitude. You know, if you can really think about the things you're grateful for now, in the present now, you know, the people that are in your life, the people that you love, the roof over your head, you can see and hear and walk and talk and, you know, all those things. Be grateful for every single thing and however you want to do it. You know, writing it down usually works pretty well for me making a list. Um, you know, keeping a gratitude journal is pretty good for, for that. Um, but definitely practice gratitude. Get in a, a practice of it meditate on it, whatever it is that you do. Um, but, but being able to tell yourself every day, many, many times a day, what it is that you're grateful for. That's really important. Remind yourself that your thoughts create your reality. Your thoughts create your reality. And so try to do your best to control your thoughts. When you have a negative thought, a self-blaming thought, and you know, replace it right away with something positive. You know, after I gave them the best years of my life, you know, how dare, you know, they leave me penniless and broke and ruin my reputation, whatever it is. Tell yourself, you know, but thank heavens that they taught me, they taught me these lessons about compassion and who I want to be and who I don't want to be and love. And they made me recognize my own resilience and my strength. They showed me who I was, you know, and, you know, thank goodness that they got me out of the life, a life that I was that wasn't gonna fulfill me and set me up to live, to, to find real love and be the person I was meant to be. You know, whatever it is, whatever's true for you, but find a way of reframing it so that you can tell yourself a positive thought and, and try as much as possible to replace those negative thoughts with positive ones every time. Every time you have a negative thought, do that. Um, so you get in the habit of doing that. So that becomes more your reality and your truth. And lastly, is remind yourself how awesome you are. Remind yourself how awesome you are. And this one's a hard one. I know this is a hard one, but it is so important because when you die, and it sounds really crazy to say, but in my case it was when I, when I died, I saw that. I saw how incredible, how loved I was and how amazing they thought I was. And how looking, looking at this person who wasn't me anymore, I saw how amazing she was too how amazing this life was and what a great opportunity uh, this person had, you know, to do some things and how, how, how everything was behind me to do whatever I wanted to do. I just had to know it. I had to believe it. Well, and of course, I saw the same for my son, you know. He was amazing and people loved him so much. He didn't see it. He didn't see it. He didn't see how amazing he was. He didn't see his perfection. He didn't see it, but everybody else did. And I guarantee you the universe did, God did, for sure. To make you, I, want to, I want you to make a list of your successes. Write 100 successes across your lifetime. You know, just, and, it can, you know, and, they, and if they break down to be a simple thing, you know, don't forget, like, write down, learn to ride a bike, learn to get a driver's license, whatever. Because at the time, those were really important victories. You know, even if you're six years old now, looking back on that, it was important at the time. So, you know, if you're, each grade, you know, because they wanted to get, you know, I finished first grade, second grade, you know, if they needed to get up to the number that they needed, but one way or another, you can get that number, you can. You've had that many successes and probably a whole lot more. So, you know, don't be afraid to go back, way back, and write the small ones, and, you know, but, um, you know, show, so you can get a sense of how amazing you really are, you know, and I don't mean that any kind of, uh, you know, I'm not trying to patronize you, I'm not trying to, blow, you know, smoke, I, we really are amazing because it's designed to be that way. You know, we were, given, we were given this life. We were given this life to do something with and we are all amazing if we can just believe it. You know, we can just believe it. 
And it's not easy. It's not easy, especially when you have major failures or maybe when you have relationships that break up and people tell you all the things that are wrong with you. It's not easy to believe how amazing you are, but you are amazing, I promise you. So, you know, those are, those are the, the four important things I just wanted, I wanted to leave with you today from Iceland. So thank you so much for being here, being part of my life. I just love you guys, you're so great. I love all of your comments. Please, um, you know, in the comments, why don't you just write down some, you know, what's, what's a success that you feel especially grateful for? Or a success you feel really good about? Or what's something you feel grateful for? Just any one of these things. Answer, an, tell me in, in one of these things what it is, how you answer this a little bit. I would love that. I would love to just get a little piece of your, of your thought process and how this goes for you. And uh, so, yeah, and I will have some great videos to show you from, from Iceland and from my, my journey here and when I get home and get some, some editing done. But this is just a quick, a quick hello, and uh, I love you from Iceland, and um, I will talk with you guys really soon. Okay, bye-bye. Oh,